Good evening. We'd like to call the Durham City Council meeting to order at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. October the 20th, and certainly want to welcome all of you that are present with us this evening. Uh, if we could just take a moment for a silent meditation, please. Thank you. I ask Councilman Davis if he would leave us in. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Mayor Bell. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cole McFadden. Present. Council Member Brown. Here. Council Member Fatati. Here. Council Member Davis. Here. Council Member Moffitt. Here. And Council Member Shule. Here. Uh, we have uh, several proclamations that we want to present this evening. Uh, we are known as the City of Medicine, uh, two great universities, and uh, fast becoming known as the City of Champions. And tonight we want to recognize uh, some of our student athletes from two of our universities here. First, I, is the athletic director, Kevin Dick, here. Well, would you join me, please? This may seem to be a bit late. We had extended an invitation uh, earlier and uh, scheduling prevented uh, the Duke team from being here. But tonight, we want to recognize the Duke University's men lacrosse and Duke University women's golf 2014 NCAA champions. And we have a proclamation that we would like to present. And the proclamation reads, whereas the Duke University men's lacrosse team held off a late charge from Notre Dame to win his second consecutive lacrosse title in NCAA Division I and his third title in five seasons, scoring 11-9 to nine over the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, whereas Duke's Jordan Wolf, was, who scored a game-high six points, named the tournament's most outstanding player and became the second player in ACC history to score over 200 points in his career, whereas John Donowski, head coach, has helped lead the Duke's University men's lacrosse team to unprecedented success during his seven-year tenure, Whereas Duke University's women's golf team reclaimed its NCAA title in the women's golfing world by holding off top-ranked Southern California, whereas this was the program's sixth national championship as they have won the team's national championship in 1999, 2002, 2005, 2006, and 2007, whereas Dan Brooks, head coach, now owns 119 career victories and has six NCAA championships on his belt, and whereas Duke University's students, faculty, staff, alumni, and all fans of the men's lacrosse and women's golf teams are to be congratulated for their sportsmanship, dedication, and support of their teams. Now, therefore, I, William V. Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby urge all citizens to join me in expressing appreciation and congratulations to Duke University's men's lacrosse team and Duke University women's golf team and the entire athletic department for an outstanding season. And witness my hand, Corpus Seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina. This is the 20th day of October, 2014. And this is the first time we've done a two-in-one proclamation that has the same significance. So I'd like to present this to you for any comments that you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, um, it's, it's an honor. It, walking, uh, first time my son was a student at Duke before I was employed at Duke. Um, it's, it's been an honor to work with the students and with the staff uh, at the university, and it's been a thrill to make Durham my home. Um, it, this is, uh, this, we have a saying, only at Duke, you know, and only in Durham. And uh, it's been, it's changed my life being at Duke, and it's changed my life being in Durham, and I'm grateful and uh, very humble to be here. Thank you so much.
Next, I'd like to ask the coach of the NCCU tennis team if he would join me this time. This is Curtis Lawson. How you doing? Great. I, I had uh, the pleasure of communicating with the coach recently, and I, I, I'll be frank, I did not know all that you guys have been doing relative to to tennis, and when he uh, shared some of that with me, I said, by all means, we need to have you have the time to come and at least be recognized and uh, for all the work that you guys do. And we, we're talking about student athletes, too. We, we, they're, they're athletes, but they're also uh, people who are getting their work done, and if you look at one of these proclamations that I'll read, you'll see what I mean by that. It reads, whereas the North Carolina Central University men's tennis team claimed the school's first HBCU national championship winning a team title with a combined 24 points, whereas NCCU men's tennis team won 12 of the 13 matches played on the first day of the HBCU National Tennis Championship, and whereas freshman Kirk Kilmutz won the men's flight A HBCU National Singles title, defeating Wallet Diatara of Bethune-Cookman, defeated him by 7-5, 6-0 in the championship match, where senior captain Daniil Jerosimov and Fabrice George won the Flight B doubles title, defeating Robert Ito and Greg Almito of Bethune Cookman, 6 4, 7 5 in the championship match. And I hope that uh, misspelling these names and mispronouncing these names doesn't take anything away from what you guys have done. <laughs> Whereas NCCU men's tennis team set a program and school record in 2014, playing a total of seven nationally ranked opponents during their regular season, five of the opponents being ACC teams. They were North Carolina State, Duke. UNC, Wake Forest, and Boston College, where senior Fabrice George was the first player in the history of North Carolina Central University to win a Division I regular season match against an ACC opponent with a win over Jalia Billa of Wake Forest and senior Stefan Charles Donathan made history in the fall of 2013 as the first NCCU player to defeat an ACC opponent in tournament competition, defeating UNC player Connor Daly in the ITA Carolina Regional Tournament, whereas in 2014, NCCU men's tennis team was one of only two HBCU programs in the country selected to host a USTA, ITA, and ESPN3 college match day event, and NCCU won the match against visiting team Howard University, my alma mater. You guys got to stop that with my alma mater. <laughs> Football, basketball, I don't know. Whereas the NCCU tennis players, coaches, and staff are an outstanding representatives of NCCU University, an emerging university now recognized for its biotechnology, biomedical research, and coveted law school, whereas in addition to their skill on the tennis court, the NCCU men's tennis team upholds a high standard of academic excellence, achieving an average GPA, team GPA, of 3.2 or above, and garnering both local and national scholastic awards each year, whereas the Eagles show tremendous dedication to their team, appreciation to their fans, sportsmanship toward their opponents, and respect for the game of tennis throughout the 2014 season, whereas NCCU students, faculty, staff, alumni, and all fans of NCCU Eagles are to be congratulated for the sportsmanship, dedication, and support of the men's tennis team, senior captain Daniel Jarisimov, senior co-captain Fabrice George, senior Jamel Hort, senior Tamina Kianka, sophomore Kyle Harrison, sophomore William East, sophomore Thomas Parisco, Freshman Kurt Kilimutz, assistant coach John McLean IV, and head coach and director of tennis D. Curtis Lawson. And now, therefore, I, William B. Bill, mayor of the city of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby urge all citizens to join me in expressing appreciation and congratulations to the NCCU tennis team for bringing the trophy back to Durham from the 2014 HBCU National Tennis Championships. And what's in my hand, the Corporate City of Durham, North Carolina, this 20th day of October. 2014, and that was a long proclamation, but well deserved. And I'm going to hand it to the coach for any comments he might make and to introduce his team. And Corey, you sit down. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to uh, thank Mayor Bell and the council for this uh, distinguished honor. We uh, take great pride in striving for excellence, both in the classroom and on the courts, and I think that uh, this proclamation and our capture of the national championship is just one of many success stories that the program has achieved. So we are very honored, uh, very humbled, 
and on behalf of our Chancellor, Dr. Saunders White, uh, and our Athletic Director, Dr. Ingrid Wicker McCree, thank you so much for this acknowledgement. Yes. Okay. Nice to meet. And uh, Mayor Bell, although you are a bison uh, by education, you are an honorary eagle by. <laughs> And we would like all eagles to stand. If, if you guys want to leave, you can. Don't feel bad. I've got one more proclamation to do. <laughs> uh, Chastity Newkirk. Are they in the room? Thank you. This proclamation recognizes the time when we're talking about take a doctor, take a, take a day to the doctor, doctor day proclamation. It's all about health. We're the city of medicine, city of athletes. Uh, we're just a great city. Uh, this is from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Culture of Health and Take a Loved One to the Doctor Day Proclamation. And Chastity is a member of the Durham Diabetes Coalition. And the proclamation reads, whereas Durham County is one of six national winners of the 2014 Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health Prize awarded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, whereas the prize honors communities that are harnessing the collective power of leaders, partners, and stakeholders to help residents live healthier lives, Whereas Durham County is being recognized for its innovative strategies to improve health, including collaboration between organizations to increase access to medical care, coordinated planning to create a healthier environment, and a focus on education and poverty in addition to disease as factors that impact health. Whereas the Durham County Department of Public Health works with community partners to create neighborhood-based exercise options like healthy mile trails and to make healthy foods more accessible by working with corner stores, Farmers markets and community support agriculture and collaborative on initiatives such as the Durham Diabetes Coalition, whereas the Durham Diabetes Coalition is a partnership of Durham County Health and community organizations, faith-based groups, local government and universities and community members. The mission of the Durham Diabetes Coalition is to identify individuals living with type 2 diabetes and provide education and assistance with effectively managing their diabetes in order to cut down on death and injury related to diabetes. Whereas our health encompasses the emotional, spiritual, social, environmental, and physical, whereas these programs support improved health outcomes, and whereas the contingent efforts of the Durham Diabetes Coalition and Partnership for a Healthy Durham is to improve the health of Durham County adults, whereas Take a Loved One to the Doctor is a campaign to increase health awareness and emphasize the importance of regular medical checkups. This initiative began in 2002 as a partnership between the Tom Joyner Morning Show and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Administration, whereas the Durham Diabetes Coalition in partnership for Health at Durham in collaboration with Radio One Raleigh are hosting a community celebration and take a loved one to the doctor event to commemorate receipt of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health Prize and to recognize the importance of preventive medical care, encourage Durham residents to get screened for potential health problems and link residents to necessary community health and social resources. Now, therefore, I, William Bill Bell, Mayor of the City of Durham, North Carolina, do hereby proclaim November 1st, 2014 as 
Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health and take a loved one to the doctor day in Durham and challenge its residents to recognize the importance of preventive health screenings and innovative health to build a culture of health. I witness my hand, Corporal Seal of the City of Durham, North Carolina. This is the 20th day of October, 2014. I'm going to present this to this young lady for any comments that she may have. Thank you. Um, thank you. Just really want to invite everyone present, um, all community members, to this great event on Saturday, November 1st at the Human Services Building um, downtown. It's a great event, family event. Um, we will have um, a celebration of the Culture of Health Prize beginning at 10 o'clock, followed by fitness demonstrations, cooking demonstrations, lots of community resources and information along with education. Um, and it's just going to be a great event. So I hope to see everyone here, there, and bring someone with you. Thank you. to recognize the Mayor Pro Tem first for the recognition. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am honored to formally introduce to the council and those watching us tonight uh, the new uh, president and CEO of Mechanics and Farmers Bank, uh, Mr. James H. Seals III. Come to the mic, sir, so everyone can see you. And we're welcoming you to the city of Durham. And I know that you're going to take us to higher heights. And if you have some words you'd like to say, please feel free. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be introduced this evening. Mayor Bell, it's great to see you again and all of the council. I'm new to Durham. I'm the new president and CEO of Mechanics and Farmers Bank. I'm excited about the opportunity. We really appreciate your business that you have uh, with our bank. Uh, I wanted you to know personally that we're focused on downtown, and so we're going to make our branch downtown a very viable branch that will drive economic development for this city. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you for the opportunity to come here this evening. And I want you to also know that we are Durham's hometown bank, so don't, don't forget that. And we got some exciting things planned in the future. So we want to partner with the city and a lot of the other organizations here. So again, thank you for the introduction, and I really appreciate everything that you've done for us. Thank you for coming to Durham. Normally, when folk come to Durham, they never want to leave. All right. <laughs> Let me recognize Councilwoman Katati and. Thank you, Mayor. I meant to bring the article from today's paper with me so I could quote from it, but I just wanted to do a shout out for Chuck Davis, who's receiving a Bessie Award in New York tonight. So congratulations to him, and I hope we'll take the opportunity to uh, recognize him with the proclamation as well. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Recognize the Mayor Pro Tem again. I attended an event at the Carolina Theater Saturday evening, and it was a performance of 100 Men in Black. There were at least 60 men. Uh, Judge uh, Hill is a member of that group. They were fantastic. But what was so outstanding was the presence of somewhere between 18 and 20 young men and some little boys who were being, mentoring, being mentored uh, for, for life. And what they have asked us to do is to go back to our different churches, synagogues, mosques, what have you, and see if there are young boys ages seven, eight, up to maybe 18, 19, who would be willing to be a part of a special choir that they are going to have next year. Um, and I think it's just wonderful. And I hope that anybody who hears us tonight will call Marlon West and express, express an interest in their children to be a part of this great event. It keeps them off the street. They are mentored for success. 
And this is just another example of great things uh, that are happening in Durham. And great things only happen, Mike, because great people make them happen, like you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, welcome. Are there other comments? If not, recognize the city manager for the priority items. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, two priority items this evening, which are supplemental items to the uh, agenda. Agenda item number 20 is the proposed acquisition of property for police headquarters at 616 East Main Street, 101 South Elizabeth Street, 113 South Elizabeth Street, 601 East Ramser Street, 605 East Ramser Street, property of GWC Properties, and at 102 Hood Street, property of W.T. Wilkerson. And then agenda item number 21 is the Neighborhood Stabilization Program 3 Grant Project Ordinance. That's all. Thank you. Entertain a motion on the city manager's priority. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes 7 to 0. I likewise recognize the city attorney for any prior guidance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No priority items. I likewise, the uh, city clerk. No items, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. In that case, we'll proceed with the agenda. Concerning the agenda being the item first, if an item is removed by a council person or a member of the audience, uh, we will discuss that item later in the agenda. Uh, again, I'll just read the heading of each one of the agenda items. Item one is approval of city council minutes. Item two is a Durham Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission appointment. Item four is a request to carry over funds from FY 2013-2014-2014-2015 to amend the 2014-15 budget and other budget grant and capital project ordinances. Item five is the Durham Interfaith Hospitality Network, Inc. 2014-2015 Community Development Block Grant Contract for Case Management Services. Item six is the Urban Ministries of Durham, Inc. 2014-2015 Community Development Block Grant Contract for Meals at the Community Kitchen. Item seven is FY2015 Agreement between the City of Durham and North Carolina State University to support the Triangle Regional Model Development Enhancement and Maintenance. And I will pull that item, item seven. Item eight is the Durham City County 911 Emergency Communications and a Local Agreement. Item 10 is a contract amendment for a contract SD 2013 to 2000, 2013 to 01, stormwater infrastructure repairs and improvements. Item 15 is an item that can be found on the general business agenda as public hearings. Entertain a motion for the approval of the consent agenda with the exception of item seven. It's been properly moved by Mayor Pro Tem, seconded by Councilwoman Katati. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Move to the general business agenda public hearings, item 15, downtown open space, to conduct a public hearing to receive comments on the downtown open space plan and to adopt the downtown open space plan if necessary. Hi, I'm Tom Dawson with the Durham City County Planning Department. I'm here to present the downtown open space plan for the council's consideration. The downtown open space plan is a policy guideline document for parks, plazas, and greenways in the downtown tier, and it's an outgrowth of the 2008 downtown ma master plan, the adopted Comprehe Durham comprehensive plan, and the approved annual planning department work, work program. The plan contains recommendations for renovations to existing downtown open spaces, suggests possible new open spaces, and proposes greenway improvements. It also includes policy and implementation recommendations. The plan is long range in scope and provides guiding principles for potential public open space projects. While the plan may contain many conceptual drawings, these are non-binding and are being used to show only one possibility with the City Council retaining total discretion on the ultimate implementation of the plan. The plan was developed over three years through a series of five public meetings and two surveys that both sought input and described progress on the plan. Two of those meetings were participatory design charrettes where residents were asked to draw their visions for open space. Staff interpreted the drawings and feedback and relayed information back to the public in the form of videos and subsequent public meetings. Staff also met with our advisory boards and commissions, 
as well as stakeholder groups such as the DDI board. Staff met with representatives of the Capital Broadcasting Company, Duke and NCCU campus planners, and many others. The plan reflects the comments made by the City Council in June work session, as well as co comments by the administration. The plan un un was unanimously recommended for approval by the Durham uh, Planning Commission on April 11th. Staff recommends adoption of the Downtown Open Space Plan, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. You've heard the staff report. This is a public hearing. I would ask first are there comments by members of the council on this staff report? If not, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven persons that have signed up to speak on this item. Uh, is anyone that would like to speak that has not signed one of the yellow cards? If so, if you could raise your hand and go to the clerk's desk to the left. Uh, meanwhile, as I call your name, if you come to the podium to the right, and if you could limit your comments to three minutes, the clock is before you. Uh, first is Reynolds Smith, Reynolds Smith present, followed, followed by John Goble, followed by Chad Jemison, followed by Joanne Andrews, followed by Marshall McNally, followed by Dan Jewell, and Alvona Piper. Now, is there anyone else that would like to speak whose name I haven't called? If you could come to the table to the left, please, my left, and sign up. Uh, meanwhile, Mr. Reynolds, you could start if you like. Uh, good There's evening. Clock for you. Um, yeah, I wrote the uh, endorsement of this plan for the, on behalf of the Durham Open Space and Trails Commission. We believe it's an excellent plan. I stress that it's a plan. It's not a prescription. Nothing can be known about the future and things change, but we think this articulates a vision. Uh, and I think it's important that the city, that the citizens of the city recognize that its government cares about their space. We want a space that's cordial, that fosters communication, and we think this plan provides that. I, I urge you to adopt this plan. Great things are happening in downtown Durham and we want them to keep happening. So thank you. Yes, my name is John Goble and I'm the current chair of the Durham Open Space and Trails Commission. And as Reynolds said, we did vote to endorse this plan. We strongly urge you to adopt the plan. I think this plan, together with other things that are, pres that are on the table, like the Ellerby Creek uh, watershed uh, green initiative will help transform Durham into a, a healthier, more beautiful, safer, and environmentally friendly city. I urge you to adopt this plan. Thank you. Chad Jemison. Mayor Bill, City Council people, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. In, I'm here to speak in support of the Open Space Plan. Uh, I'm, my name is Chad Jemison. and I'm the Executive Director of Triangle Land Conservancy. And two years ago, we relocated our offices, our headquarters, to downtown Durham on South Duke Street, part of because of the vitality that we were seeing in Durham and the opportunity that we saw uh, as the community was truly continuing to charge forward in the revitalization of downtown, the TLC has a, a, might have a role to play in, in no other way than being part of that community as it moves forward. We represent hundreds of thousands of households across the triangle. We work across six counties in partnership with communities with, at the county level, at the town level, at the city level. Uh, we're involved with watershed protection, we're involved with supporting greenway projects, but I tell you, the opportunity to, that Durham has to work on open space protection in its downtown area, it's, it's huge. And this is a, a tremendous opportunity that, that has been brought forward by the Planning Commission in support of open space. You know, while it's not binding, this is such an impressive plan and you can tell how much care and thoughtfulness and community engagement was put into it. Uh, we at Triangle Land Conservancy believe in healthy, vibrant, commu livable communities, and that includes from downtown to distressed communities 
to fast growing uh, communities across the triangle. And I'm here today to, one, just to speak on behalf of our membership in support of this open space plan, and also to just say that we are interested in partnering as going forward, that it's not all on the city, that there are public-private partnerships and uh, partnerships with other agencies who are very interested in working in partnership with you uh, to create that vit vital downtown livable city. So thank you so much for your work and consideration of this plan. And thank you to the staff and all of the committees who worked to bring this together. You're welcome. Uh, Joanne Andrews. Good evening. My name's Joanne Andrews. I live at 1715 Shawnee Street. Uh, I teach with Durham Public Schools. I've been a Durham resident for over 20 years. I participated in the earlier charrettes for the open space plan. I'm here to express my support for the proposed open space plan. As Durham quickly grows and develops, quality open space is necessary in attracting business, visitors, and residents, and it's vital to the physical, social, and civic health of our community. Quality open space is as valuable an asset as any new business. This plan is thoughtful and visionary, linking together all areas of downtown in a comprehensive, functional, and beautiful way. Please support this plan, fund it, and implement it in all its phases. Thank you. Welcome. Marsha McNally. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Marsha McNally, and I'm here to represent the Durham Crest Condo Association. Uh, we are not an open space organization, but rather a daily uh, consumer of downtown open space. We sent you a letter via email on Friday, and I'd like to take a minute to outline our key points. Most important, we urge you to adopt the downtown open space plan. It's straightforward, it's well-crafted, it's inspired, and it's democratic. The staff did a great job getting the word out, involving the citizens, involving organizations, doing internal uh, sort of uh, recruitment for the ideas and uh, getting buy-in across the board. Having been an open space planner for uh, decades, I have been completely impressed from beginning to end at the way that this project has been undertaken and proceeded. As you know, the plan is calls for modest improvements of existing parks, but it also uh, uh, calls out creative reuse of um, space that's overlooked um, and left over. It encourages pedestrianism, which is uh, consistent with a lot of the other uh, goals um, of the city, and it also um, creates important connections, not only to trails, but to neighborhoods that come right up to downtown making it cohesive and, and a glue uh, for the whole city. As others have already said, with downtown's rapidly growing residential population, we need more parks. The plan not only shows how downtown can meet the needs of this growth, but also how urban open space can become um, a drawing amenity that increases the quality of life of Durham for residents who live in the downtown, for residents who live elsewhere in the city, and for visitors as well as workers. Again, we at Crest ask that you adopt the plan and look forward to working with the city on implementation, and we hope that you all will call on us to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next, Dan Jewell. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Manager, members of the council. My name is Dan Jewell, 1025 Gloria Avenue, and I'm here tonight uh, speaking as the current chair of the Durham Area Designers, or uh, DAD, as we're sometimes known around the community. DAD is a loose organization of designers, planners, developers, and folks who generally are interested uh, in how our built environment can positively influence our quality of life. We promote and facilitate meaningful community discourse and discussion on ensuring that the places we cr create contribute to the great place that we want to live. We followed and participated in the discourse over the downtown open space plan for these many, many months now. Uh, we sat in on the workshops, have had regular updates from the planning department, followed the communications of the steering committee, and have had uh, at length internal discussions over the plan. To that end, the board of DAD has asked me to uh, 
strongly ask that you adopt the plan before you tonight. Is the plan perfect? Probably not. Uh, are all of the concepts proposed for the various sites uh, around town the best possible plans? Unlikely. But that's just my opinion. And tonight, my opinion, and the opinion really, I think, of anybody else in the room, is not what counts. What counts is how much public discourse and time and stakeholder input has gone into this plan. This plan has been a model of creating a community-based plan. To do anything other than adopt the plan tonight, I believe, would diminish those efforts. The plan, though, should be a living document. Just as there are opportunities to modify Durham's comprehensive plan and our unified development ordinance, uh, there should be similar framework in place to modify this document once it is adopted. But the most important point is that that opportunity to modify the document have just as much of the ability to have broad public discussion and input and framework as coming up with the document in the first place did. That is the way we do things in Durham. And for that reason, we strongly urge you to adopt this plan tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ivana Piper. Good evening, my name is Ivona Piper and I represent a, a resident, a downtown resident. I last week did email to all of you um, a letter requesting that you approve the plan. I, uh, being a layperson, nevertheless, I look at the plan, I read it, I walked the many sites it uh, addresses and discussed it with neighbors and concluded it is a terrific plan. Uh, it strikes a very fine balance between livability and development. And as a resident, uh, I am looking forward not only you approving the plan, but executing it uh, within the vision and specification it outlines. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Randolph Hester. I'm uh, Randolph Hester. Uh, my office is over on Church Street. Thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Mayor, Manager, Council. I'm usually on the other side of these. I've been doing open space plans um, for other cities for uh, about 50 years. And I'm very critical of open space plans and planners. I was completely converted by your staff, their dedication, their professionalism, the extent to which they went to great lengths to include anyone who could possibly ever be concerned about open space in Durham. They provided us with the information that we needed. They helped us develop our own ideas. They led us to a place that I think we have a world-class open space plan. It will make this civic area second to none. We won't be the envy of Charlotte. We will be the envy of Chicago. I urge you to adopt this plan. I want to thank specifically Tom Dawson for his heroic effort. To have done the plan in-house, I think, made it better. It engaged us at every point. It is a plan that is uniquely Durham. It is still a little gritty. It is idealistic. It is entrepreneurial, and it reflects the best of our cultural diversity. Let's adopt this plan tonight, and let's make it happen, and let's start right now. Thank you. 
Mary Barzi. It's a tough one to follow. Um, my name is Mary Barzi. I'm a 10-year resident of Walltown, and I also work in downtown Durham. I ride my bike or walk to work nearly every day, and this plan got me extremely excited about the future of Durham. Um, I'll just keep it sweet. I hope that, that it is adopted, and thank you for looking at it today. You're welcome. Uh, is there anyone else that uh, would like to speak on this item, this being a <coughs> public hearing item? Uh, let the record reflect that no one else acts to speak. I will declare the public hearing to be closed and matters back before the council. As Councilwoman Katari, Councilwoman Shul, in that order. I would like all the staff involved in <laughs> this plan to please stand. You are stars tonight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your work um, and thank you everyone who came tonight in support of this plan as councilwoman katari thank you mayor i also appreciate all the effort that's gone into this plan and the participation by so many stakeholders um, i wholeheartedly agree with the need for more urban open space and just specifics, generally I agree with the priority order noted in the purple table on page 36 of the report and the projects noted there. I'm not going to ask you questions about that. I do have some questions about the funding plan and phasing of project implementation. Um, I did hear staff, Mr. Dawson, say that the plan's non-binding and that council retains discretion, but can you clarify uh, um, when I'm done? how you expect projects to come forward, whether they'll come individually for approval and funding and design. Um, similar to, I guess, what uh, Mr. Jewell said, I don't necessarily agree with all the proposed projects and locations, and I, too, fear inherent conflicts with upcoming development projects. So again, I completely support the concept and the need for urban open space and the corresponding commitments on development developer projects but I do want to retain some flexibility in individual locations and priorities. So if staff can comment on those concerns, thanks. Thank you. Um, we will be coordinating with different uh, departments and we've already begun to work on projects individually as uh, they relate to other departments, uh, such as the Beltline, Beltline and uh, Rotary Park with General Services. Um, so as they, as they arise, uh, other departments will begin to coordinate with, with them. We uh, anticipate uh, far, uh, more in future discussions on uh, individual spaces within the plan as um, other development projects start to move. Uh, we'll begin, begin to comment and uh, develop those ideas further. Is there any intention to do an overall plan for f or a cost estimate? I mean, what would it cost to implement this whole thing? And also phasing, I mean, what we actually think will come forward in short, medium, long term. I just think that level of extra specificity would be helpful, particularly to folks that want to know what it means. We don't want this plan to sit on a shelf, but I think to make it realistic, we need to have some pretty clear um, cost and timing yes. elements. So. Yes, thank you. That would come in uh, future phases as we begin to develop these spaces. Um, cost estimation would come within the design development uh, of these these uh, these spaces. Going, but I guess my interest and concern is I understand that they will come individually with cost estimates, but I think in terms of prioritization and making decisions about some things, it would be helpful to have a sort of pictorial view of so we can make some comparisons, not just based on land availability and other things. So. Um, Steve Madlin with the Durham Planning Department. Uh, certainly understand your question, Council Member Katati. We had not programmed that into our work program, but we are going to be considering our next year's work program at our upcoming Joint City County Planning Committee for items to add to the priority list. Certainly, I believe that is one of those things that we can probably add to that list. I can ask Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, just want to add to my congratulations and thanks to the staff for 
your great work, and, and uh, a lot has been said about that already tonight. Um, I think the, the vetting in the public process was, was great. The, I really like the inventory of assets and the presentation of them in the report. I like the comprehensive nature of it. The, it considers parking, recreation, environmental benefits, connectivity, transit, the tree canopy, stormwater. I mean, this is a very holistic view of what this, what this open space plan uh, can mean. It's got streetscapes. It's considers public art. I mean, there's a lot in here, uh, and it's done very concisely, extremely readable, and I think that our, our public will be able to really use this. Um, I like the recommendations a lot. Let me just mention a couple. Uh, the use of recreation and open space fees from all three impact zones downtown and trying to figure out how we might do that, I think, is a very interesting and, and, and good recommendation. Um, the on-site open space requirement for larger developments, and the site-specific recommendations. I agree with what people have said. You know, we can, we, I'm sure every one of us can look at this and say, I just don't think that's going to work. But in general, I think the site-specific recommendations are really strong and interesting. And I really, particularly a few of the ones that I thought were really good, uh, the convention center, and, and a lot of these we've, we discussed in work session in more detail. But the convention center plaza reconfiguration, I think, is a really interesting aspect of this. Uh, the Church Street, North Roxborough Street Park, I mean, this is going to take some work on our streets in the loop, but what a fantastic asset that would be. And I think, to me, that is one of the, the uh, I would say, uh, well, let, let me just go on and, and come back to that. But that, to me, is key. Uh, and the other key, I think, is the Beltline, and I'm so, um, appreciative of our transportation department. I see Lindsay out here uh, and with our Tiger Grant, the work that uh, Dost, I see John Goble out here and others, Reynolds, uh, that folks are doing uh, in, in beha on behalf of, of trying to get the support and the funds together to do what we need to do to make the Beltline a reality. I think it's just such a critically important piece of this and appreciate it. Uh, and then I wanted to mention also the DPAC Green. That's a great, I, I was, I, I just want you all to know that I ran the half marathon yesterday and I did not die. No one scraped me off the street. But at the end, there was an amazing assemblage of people, thousands of people on the DPAC Green. What a great open space and this is private property and so it's important that we work with the landowner to make this viable for them and viable for, for the residents of the city. It's, it's just a tremendous asset. Um, so those were some of the site-specific recommendations I liked particularly. Um, I think just a couple of things that I wanted to mention that seem like big challenges in addition to funding this, which Diane has already mentioned. But one of them is the, getting the traffic separation study right. And uh, I was glad that Dan is here and Randy uh, from DAD from Darren Marriott designers are doing a lot of great work on that and that's going to be a big challenge but it will be it'll be important for many things but it'll be especially important for this open space plan um, and then of course the loop uh, how are we going to figure that out it's expensive uh, how are we going to get that right and how are we going to pay for it so these are challenges that are before us that I think impact this quite a lot but when people move here People are moving downtown, and a big part of the quality of life is going to be determined by whether or not we do this well. And so this is such a fantastic basis and foundation for that. And I really appreciate um, Mr. Dawson, Mr. Medlin, and, and the whole staff's work on this. Um, and then finally, I was glad to see Mr. Jemson here from Triangle Land Conservancy saying that, that they're happy to become partners, because I do think it's going to take that. Uh, there are some, I could suggest some pieces of this you might want to take right away and help us fund. Uh, so it's glad, I'm glad to hear that, because I know you all do fund, uh, you, you help fund open space projects. And uh, in this plan we've got here, we've got some for you. So uh, it's really important that we have those partnerships, and I appreciate it. But I, I'm, I'm, uh, I think this is a good chance Although, the, although uh, the staff has taken great pains to stress that this is a plan that 
the council will retain control over and various projects will come up and we'll be able to make decisions on them. I think what is important about this, adopting this, is that we lay down a marker and we, that we say as a, as, a, as, a, as a community that this is what we want to do and these are, the, these are the standards for open space that we want to hit downtown. Uh, and so thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I look forward to our adoption of this. Thank you. Are there other comments? Councilman Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, to support the plan, and I again thank the, the staff uh, for all their hard work and vision on this. Um, I was pleased to see that the DAD group, the uh, Durham Area Design Group, has sort of come around a little bit on this and uh, to me that's very meaningful um, I'm also glad to see the Triangle Land Conservancy here and hopefully you can step up in the future and perhaps help us because everyone knows you have more money than the city does for uh, purchasing futures land uh, and, and finally uh, it's important too now that uh, everyone realize that this plan is not set in stone that it is a living plan um, and I'm glad that our staff mentioned that at, at the beginning but uh, I certainly support it and if there if there are no other comments I'd like to call the question well, to move the item, to move the item. Any if, other? There, if there are no other comments well I, I think I, I don't know if I could add any more that's been said by yeah. the public and my, my colleagues on the council I mean, to me it's a living document it's almost a strategic plan for an open space in downtown Durham and you sort of taken a I can't say a blank easel but you painted a picture for us and that's, that's by the way speaking of pictures what's what's on the cover I'm trying to figure out where <laughs> where this cover piece is because I just had a conversation with the manager about this green space T tell me what this, this what this is you got a got water in here you got green space in here what what, what are you doing <coughs> actually within the uh, within the context of the survey that we uh, um, that we put forth earlier in the process uh, many residents did want some sort of connection with water and we did uh, take pains to um, include uh, water and especially in regards to stormwater management um, this was an early concept it's not shown in the later plans okay. but it wanted to show that we can have fun with water in the city so uh, the actual space um, or the actual rendering uh, is in front uh, uh, of the DPAC uh, yeah. area as, yeah. um, um, as something that the DPAC could look down on and also frame the DPAC. But, okay. Uh, uh, the reason I asked it, I, I just before, lunch, before we came in, I was just commenting to the manager, much along the line of what Steve has said, how we've got to keep that green space open. That came through town also when the uh, race was over. And again, it's just it's something we can't afford to lose. But then I see this water here. I said, well, is that part of the plan too? Which is Actually, we, we've, um, we've dialed back that particular okay. area because right. there's so much um, development potential within that. But it does, it is, we framed it as being very important for, as a, to retain as a green space and, and the design will, will come in later development. Okay, great. All right, question's been called. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to supplemental item, uh, item 20, proposed acquisition of property for police headquarters at 616 East Main Street, 101 South Elizabeth Street, 113 South Elizabeth Street, 601 East Ramsford Street, and 605 East Ramsford Street, property of GWC Properties, and at 102 Hood Street, property of W.T. Wilkinson. Mayor Bell and City Council, my name is Joel Reitzer, Director of the Department of General Services. Um, this item is for the proposed acquisition of property for the new police headquarters complex at 616 East Main Street, 101 South Elizabeth Street, 113 South Elizabeth Street, 601 East Ramsur Street, and 605 East Ramsur Street, property of GWC Properties. And the property located at 102 Hood Street 
property of W.T. Wilkerson. The real estate staff of General Services has negotiated an option to purchase a total of 4.439 acres of land and improvements located in the area bordered by East Main Street, Elizabeth Street, Ramsar Street, and Hood Street from GWC Properties for $5.49 million. This option has been provided to the city by the property owner. And the real estate staff has also negotiated uh, an option to purchase 0 0.084 acres of land and improvements located at 102 Hood Street from W.T. Wilkerson for $200,401. This option has been provided to the city by the property owner and, and is included in your package. Um, the Department of General Services uh, recommends the city approve the fee simple acquisition of both of these properties. Um, the, we have worked with the police department and 911 emergency communications department in reviewing various options for uh, relocation or redevelopment of a police headquarters site and we presented this to you in the work session on October 9th. Um, Police Department and 911 departments wholeheartedly support this site location for the new Police Department headquarters and 911 complex. We have begun due diligence on the properties. Um, Public Works Department has provided uh, field work for a property survey for the entire properties in located as listed previously and we have obtained appraisals of the two properties and we've also received proposals for geotechnical and environmental investigations for the properties so um, we recommend uh, this um, acquisition are there any questions, questions. All right. uh, let me ask other questions first by councilman brown I just want to ask okay. Joel to cover a couple of things. Joel, could you uh, clarify the uh, the due diligence that will be um, following uh, an action by the council before the uh, any closing of the property, you know, of the real estate transaction actually takes place, and then uh, comment about the uh, review of the independent appraisals that the city had completed on the properties? Yes. Uh, let me take the appraisals question first. Um, the uh, G GWC Properties uh, was appraised for um, $5.39 million and the uh, Wilkerson property for $80,000, uh, $80, excuse me, $80,000. So uh, there's a difference between the um, purchase price on the Wilkerson property because the appraiser looked at the value of the property alone versus looking at the entire business that's located. So there is a business in that location of Wings and More, a restaurant that's been there for uh, at least 10 years. Whereas the fee simple acquisition uh, of the GWC properties uh, was about $100,000 less, and that's just for the property itself. Now, as part of the acquisition uh, of these properties from GWC, there is a revenue stream there. The closing would be in, in January of 2015, and um, there are tenants in those locations. There's about 11 tenants on the GWC property, and there is a revenue stream that would continue through 2015. And the net value of that would offset the difference in appraisal for the GWC property. As far as the due diligence on the properties, I mentioned the survey is ongoing. The Public Works Department has been very uh, helpful in that. Um, the geotechnical investigations would proceed uh, with uh, approximately 15 borings to bedrock depth and the borings would give us uh, soils information, environmental, environmental information and as well there will be a, a asbestos report and the seller of the property GWC will be providing us with the phase one environmental investigation, phase two and uh, any no further action reports have been received from uh, Diener. Could I follow up on that, if you don't mind? I, I had a little conversation with the manager earlier about the $80,000 appraised value of the property. And I just think for the public, is we, we need to give a pretty good explanation as to why we're paying almost two and a half times the appraised value of it. 
and I know you indicated that um, this was for the property itself, but generally when you go to the tax office and you're doing uh, evaluations, uh, they can do the income approach or the approach that you have here. So I guess my question is, do you have a feeling that the income approach on this property would place it close to the value we're talking about purchasing for $200,000? We do not have a profit and loss statement on the business, but have met with the business owner, and he has provided with his opinion of the gross revenue and net revenue on the um, restaurant property. He forecasts a $175,000 per year uh, net revenue out of the restaurant. Uh, so is there any particular reason we, when we did appraisal, since we knew this was a business, that we didn't ask them to do, take both approaches in terms of an appraisal value for it? We were looking at the property alone at that time, and the conversations uh, that we have uh, finalized with the property owner, Mr. Wilkerson, uh, have been just most recent. Uh, we have uh, been endeavoring to have a conversation about including this uh, small property with the entire block because it is uh, right along Main Street. It is a, a strategic location uh, on the property for Main Street frontage, and so um, the conversation uh, on the income approach was just in the last uh, several days. Again, I just think it's important when we talk about spending this kind of money that we have a sense as to why we're paying such a large difference. And I guess what you're telling us that the property's value for what we're trying to do is worth paying the price you're suggesting we pay for it. It definitely is our recommendation to proceed. Um, the um, business owner actually wanted to continue operating business in that location and considering the amount of net revenue that he's forecast, uh, we believe it's, it's advisable to proceed with this acquisition. Okay, I recognize Councilman Brown. Um, <clears throat> I want to follow up on the uh, mayor's concerns because um, I imagine, Joel, that there were there was more than one appraisal? No, just, just one appraisal on each of the properties. Okay. If I recall, normally we get two appraisals. Uh, I was curious why we did not on this. That, that is, uh, that's definitely not uh, necessary in this case, in our opinion. Okay. So, and again, I may be wrong on this. But I think uh, we're paying a rather steep price. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're paying close to one million dollars an acre. I believe that the um, the smaller property is much larger uh, price per square foot, but it is a very small property. It's an odd shaped property and it really completes the block. Whereas the a larger property, the, um, the Carpenter Chevrolet property is in the neighborhood of 28 to $29 a square foot. If you multiply that out times 43,560 okay. uh, square feet per acre, then you come up with the, the uh, price per acre. Okay. Uh, what about the cost of the demolition? Cost of demolition would be included uh, in the city's uh, capital project budget versus the acquisition. So there is a uh, there is a uh, estimated value of demolition of the properties that uh, staff has received. I'm sorry. Could you? We have received that. Yes. Right. In, in the, some of the estimates, it's uh, between three and four hundred thousand dollars for all of the demolition work, including the buildings, asphalt pavements, and the other improvements that are in the entire block. All right, so again, let's summarize here that the, the cost of this property, the Carpenter Chevrolet and the Wilkinson piece, and when you include the demolition, we're looking at what again? Um, probably in round numbers, um, round um, numbers. about $6 million total. Yeah. Well, I just want to, for the record, State, uh, and I am the only real estate broker sitting up here. 
uh, that I think that's an exceedingly high cost. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I have a couple people signed. I was trying to get to the council. Okay. Any other comments from the council at this time? If not, we had two people that signed to speak on this item. Um, and this is in the public hearing, but uh, still an opportunity to speak on this uh, important decision the council is making. Uh, Marcus Jackson is Marcus Jackson present, uh, followed by uh, V. Peterson, and you each have three minutes. This Rob. Rob Emerson also. I, I'm calling people who have signed up to Marcus, speak. Marcus Jackson Marcus. and Marcus. Marcus Jackson, V. Peterson, and Rob Emerson. If someone else wants to speak, I'm going to ask you to go to the clerk's side and get a copy. Right, you have three minutes. Marcus Jackson, I represent GWC Properties. I um, have a serious passion for downtown. I also represent uh, 539 Foster Street, which is next to the farmer's market and is going to be the site of a future condominium project. Uh, to show you how much passion I have, I also represent the investor group out of Charlotte that has the Hendrick site under contract with Money Hard. They are planning a significant mixed-use project there and they're proceeding very rapidly. I, um, it's been a fairly long process and I've attended the community meetings I believe virtually every one of them, and I've tried to listen uh, to both sides. Uh, that's what any good broker does. And um, uh, there have been criticisms about economic development on the eastern side of downtown, both current and as, impact, as potentially impacted by the police headquarters. And, and that's, a, that's a fair comment, especially when you consider eastern downtown does lag behind the other districts, but uh, I do see a significant amount of uh, hope in spite of the media regarding the likely location of the police headquarters in eastern downtown. We, we have to account for the success of Golden Belt. They deserve a tremendous amount of credit, and Southside Rolling Hills is about to deliver, and I think we all know that that's going to be a significant success. We have the future location of the Dillard light rail station, and we are seeing a lot of signs, frankly, of what makes Durham tick, is entrepreneurism and the pioneers. Uh, just last month, an entertainment restaurant entrepreneur bought a half-acre track directly across from the police headquarters. So the police headquarters has been in the press. It's hardly inhibiting economic development. Um, I've even prepared an aerial called Downtown Durham East. I'm happy to share it with you where I've started to dot and mark the, uh, the progress of Eastern Downtown. And so it is reaching everybody. And I want to speak to you a minute about Hendrick. Uh, my client uh, is a very sophisticated investor group. They have full knowledge of Eastern Downtown. They've driven it extensively, and they know all about the police headquarters. They view the police headquarters in that location as a positive. And I, every time that I show a prospective developer that's interested in the Hendrick site, I take them by the police headquarters, and I haven't heard one single negative comment. So I'm a great believer in downtown Durham East and great believer of the police being in that location. Thank you. Welcome. V. Peterson. Um, I think a lot of persons here in the community, I think we sort of forget that Durham is an aging community. Uh, a lot of the homeowners and persons who own homes in this community, a lot of them were senior citizens. When we have projects like these, the monies that are being used are coming from the taxpayers, the homeowners. 
I also agree with one of the city council persons. I think $6 million is a lot of money. I don't think there's any property downtown that is worth over a million dollars each for acres of land. Nothing downtown is. And I think it's wrong for these persons who own this, these various properties for them to gulge and take advantage of the people in this community. Uh, I also would also like to talk a little bit about do we really need a huge, huge police station in one area? I don't have a problem in having some satellites stations around the city and maybe have one main small facility. We keep saying in this community that crime is going down, that we have a handle on crime. Well, we just got finished building a huge courthouse and now we want to build a huge police station. But we constantly keep hearing that crime is getting better in Durham. Well, if crime is getting better, why do we keep building facilities that deal with crime, that houses and work with persons that have committed crime? And Mr. Mayor and City Council members, what I would really like to see this community do, we have various persons that come together and work on various projects. Why can't we get a group together in this community and really put persons together to work on what we need to do to get a handle on crime? How can we get the young men working and trained in skills? And I just want to say this last thing. I have a criminal justice background. Never that I know of in the history of this country that, that African American men have gotten involved with serial killing. When you go home tonight, you're gonna to see that on your news. If we do not get the crime under handle in this community, that is gonna be some of the problems that we're going to have. Black men need jobs, they need job training, they need skills, and they need employment. Keep building courthouses, and running the African-American community through those courthouses, making money off the backs of our grandmothers and uncles and fathers, because many of these men cannot pay for that. So Mr. Mayor, I'm asking the city council to please sort of look at some other ways instead of keep building these huge, huge facilities to deal with crime when crime is supposed to be going down. And thank you very much. Mr. You're welcome. Uh, Rob Emerson. Yes, sir. Um, I can't speak quite as passionately as, as Mrs. Peterson. She's certainly uh, a passionate woman. I appreciate your words. Um, I wrote to the council last week, and I would just like to read real briefly a little bit of what I wrote. I think you've all probably seen this, and I'll do my best not to uh, bore you all with it. Um, I've been following this process pretty closely. And I do support having a, a new police headquarters. Um, I'm not opposed to having that police headquarters on East Main Street. Uh, my opposition is to the demolition of the historic structures that occupy the Carpenter Motor Company site. Um, there are two buildings in particular, the 1928 uh, original Carpenter Motor Company building, the one closest to the street that's covered in the unfortunate metal cladding um, and the blue and white paint and the 1948 uh, truck building, which is to the rear of the site. Um, these are valuable historic assets, and buildings just like these have been renovated all over Durham. Um, you don't have to look very far. Golden Belt, West Village, um, American Tobacco, any building in Central Park District. Um, many buildings that had trees growing out of them and, and people thought should have been torn down. Uh, one good example is now occupied by um, Burt's Bees. So um, I'd just like to say uh, downtown Durham is just starting to hit its stride largely because of historic preservation projects that repurposed buildings just like these. And I would strongly encourage um, us not to go too far down a path of this being the site um, and having to tear these buildings down. We've done far too much of that in East Durham and in particular on Main Street. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to. Uh, bring this conversation back to the council. I have some comments I want to make up here for my colleagues. So I, 
I recognize Councilwoman Katati. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't object to moving forward on this site, although personally I had preferred con reconstruction on the current headquarters site. Uh, what I would like to do right now is just reiterate my concerns that were, I noted at the work session regarding project design and the need to activate Main Street, as well as to consider additional capacity in the proposed parking deck to support the planned transit stop nearby on Dillard Street. Um, I've already shared this with the manager, but I'd like to suggest that we consider having the planning department host an urban design studio to get additional input and address concerns for the design of the site. We've heard a lot from um, folks that are concerned about the design. I'd also like the manager to consider exploring the potential for public-private partnerships on the site, particularly to support retail on Main Street. I understand the security concerns and sensitivity, but I wonder if perhaps by moving the annex forward that maybe the annex is, you know, is less secure. I mean, there's just issues I think that could be addressed. So I'm wondering if um, staff could uh, briefly clarify also the next steps. I know. Um, it was outlined in the manager's memo, but regarding the architectural contract and other aspects of things that would happen if we make a decision tonight, what's, what's the immediate timetable? Thanks. Yes, well, we have received um, proposals from um, the shortlisted firms for architecture, engineering, and also for construction management. And we will be bringing to you for your consideration uh, negotiated uh, contracts with those entities here in a next um, um, cycle or two as soon as those negotiations have been completed. Um, we have provided several test fits that we've shown to you on the various properties um, for and particularly on the Main Street we've had more studies done on that recently than previously and of course the site is adequate for all of the facilities that we have um, indicated in our facilities program including the parking structure um, we will hold uh, design and planning forums uh, for the site to provide stakeholders an opportunity to provide input on the issues of interest such as um, streetscape pedestrian experience land use and open space uh, historical context and resources and uh, we can also provide you with sequential progress reports of how we are uh, progressing with this so this is a, a, a public building and it's an important site on Main Street we recognize that we recognize all of the interest that there is in the site for um, activity on East Main Street and it's our intent to explore all of the subjects that have been brought to to your attention and to ours as well It'll be a deliberative process it'll probably take us about a year to get through the design but uh, we want to move through it quickly because cost escalation is reportedly um, uh, people have found out about Durham and a, a lot of the uh, trade contractors in particular are, are very busy these days developers have come to town and proposed uh, very uh, large complexes and projects so we want to proceed through it quickly without delay but we do want to go through a deliberative process to make sure that there's community input in the design recognize Councilman Moffitt and Councilman Shule thank you um, Councilman Brown the math is 1.3 million per acre it's it's just 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 to let you know the the math Sorry, is, I couldn't hear you the math is 1.33 per acre 1.33 million per acre you were asking earlier that's the answer the um I the plan that you just read um Mr. Reitzer you were looking at a document and reading a plan could you I would like to have that in writing I'd like to know I'm visual I'm not very audio so if you could provide that that would be great What's well, an outline at this point? We'd be happy to provide that to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Just an outline and even just rough dates, that would be perfect. Thank you. I do want to say that, um, as I said in the work session, I share uh, Councilwoman Katati's concerns um, about Main Street, about the design, about the impacts on the, uh, on the street and on Durham. So I, do, I will want to have periodic updates and be able to review progress. So thank you. Recognize Councilman Shul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, thank you very much. 
Let me ask a question. How long, what is the range? Uh, is the police headquarters pro projected to be in use? When you build a building like this, how long does it, how long do we use it for? Well, the pro projected uh, plan for its, its usage in terms of how long it will take to fill it up and be so full that it will be spilling out, or in terms of the physical construction. Physically, the construction could last 100 years because we anticipated reinforced concrete and steel structure there. Okay. So that the, as far as the, the growth of the community, once we reach a, a, a point of growth uh, with our, our police, this is for command and control for 911 and it's for our forensics and, and, and property and evidence as well. So there's a lot going on at this particular site. So at some given point though, as our growth continues, um, there would be uh, the possibility of needing to uh, have satellite growth of some of those services in the future. So I would say in the 20 year range, you'll be looking at other types of facilities. Now in the overall plan provided by Carter Goebel, there was a different plan for the districts in terms of there's plan A and plan B. Plan A was dispersed out in the various districts in satellite locations in plan B was to have the police service centers sort of consolidation of, of a north and south facilities for efficiency. So there are a couple of different ideas on how to take care of the uh, districts and the activity going out in the districts. And then um, those, those two options are still on the table for your consideration, for your future consideration as the police department services uh, needs grow. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I just want to, uh, and I appreciate that, Joel. Thank you for that. Um, I, I want to uh, uh, align myself with uh, Diane's comments about the uh, about uh, about the walkability and pedestrian friendly um, the need for this to be a walkable, pedestrian friendly area to connect to Golden Belt and to East Durham, the neighborhoods of East Durham. And if this is a forbidding corridor, that's going to be a bad outcome for everybody. And, and I appreciate Don's request for, for periodic updates. And, and I know you all will take these designs concerned very seriously. Um, and I understand the concern about the historical, the historic building on the property. Uh, we, we have, we, I, I think that as with any site, there are trade-offs and, and I appreciate the concern that you raise. Uh, and it's not to be taken lightly. We certainly discussed this at length at the, at the work session. Uh, but I think in this case, uh, this is the best site given all the possible trade-offs and I'm, I'm certainly planning to vote for it. Um, the, I do want to say one other concern I have and, and uh, again, I think this is something that my colleagues have raised that this purchase does take away a possible site for dense transit friendly development very near a future light rail station. This is all the more reason I think we need to be moving as quickly as we can to develop the plans for our station areas to include plans for affordable housing. And so, again, I support this, uh, but I do think it comes with trade-offs, as, as many big decisions like this do. I appreciate the deliberative process that you all have been through, and I feel like we've been well informed throughout, and I think we've been given really good information about the choices facing us, and uh, so I'll be planning to vote for it. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Recognize the mayor pro tem. Um, how will residents be involved in this process? Well, I believe that um, um, and I'm mayor talking pro tem. I, I, I mean, uh, people like James and the, the PAC. In, in er yeah, whatever they can be a part of. Regular people. It would be our, our idea to make contact through the different groups such as the PACs as well as through downtown Durham and other uh, community organizations so that when we do have the forums, we'll also uh, ask for the help of the planning department okay. in terms of making contacts through um, their contacts for the, uh, planning processes that are similar. So it, it would be our hope that we'd be able to reach everyone who has interest so that they'd have an opportunity for input as we progress through the plan. Thank you. I uh, had um, at the last work session that 
uh, urge us to try to move forward on the recommendation of administration in terms of purchasing this property. And I still haven't changed my mind on that. I raised some questions about cost because I think that's always important to understand, not just for us, but for the general public. But I guess I, I, I'm comfortable that the staff has gone through its due diligence in trying to find a suitable site. I don't think it's a question of whether or not we need a new police headquarters. I think that's pretty much been established. Uh, but the question is where? And I recall uh, back when I was a county commissioner and we were building this thing called the judicial center, or planning for the judicial center, the jail. And everybody was saying, why are you going to build a jail there? Well, there were two reasons we built that jail. One, the courts were saying, if you don't do something, we're going to put you in jail because the jail that you presently had was intolerable. The second was, no one in the community was asking to build a jail in their neighborhood. Nobody asked for a jail to be built in that neighborhood. Uh, so that's where it was. But along with that, we always knew that there was a judicial plan and the courthouse was to come later. And uh, the county commissions have done that. And I don't think anybody talks about the jail now. When we're doing DPAC, everybody was up in the uproar. Why are you going to build a performing arts center across from a jail? Now that the courthouse has been built, nobody pays any attention to the jail. Uh, with the police station, we're in the same position. Nobody's asked for a police station to be built in their neighborhood. No one has asked. And I think the staff has gone through and picked out uh, sites that meet the criteria that are needed. And at first, I was in support of Federal Street. But obviously, we knew what happened there with the Durham Housing Authority having uh, plans for that. So we backed off of that one. Uh, we've seen the costs involved for trying to build on the present site. So I, I think this is the right site. But I also acknowledge the concerns that have been raised by my colleagues and people who have written. We, we really want to build something that is, that is friendly. And I think that we can find a creative way once we've got the site, as we go through these public deliberations and get the public involved to allow that to happen. One other concern I do have is when we were building the convention center, uh, there was some talk about, well, why don't we have stores along the side of the street? Uh, well, one of the problems we had, and I'm going to ask the city attorney to opine on that. At that time, we were told that you could not use public dollars to build commercial space uh, and lease it out. I don't know if that's still the case or not. So when we talk about using the site for retail and commercial, I think we've got to understand what our limits are. Uh, it might mean that we end up selling <laughs> the site back to somebody to build that. But I don't think that we as a public body can, can build commercial state, commercial space to rent it out. So I uh, just think we need to keep that in mind as we go through all these public deliberations about what we want to see on that site and how we want it to be customer friendly and walkable and et cetera. But, but having said that, I, I support the recommendation of the administration and I'd entertain a motion on, on. what's being proposed. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? And close the vote. It passes seven to zero. Mr. Brown, are you voting no? Yes, I'm voting no. Okay, it passes six to one with Councilmember Brown voting no. Thank you. Let's move to item 21, Neighborhood That's Stabilization right. Program, three grant project ordinance. Mayor Bell, members of council, Reginald Johnson, Director of Community Development Department. The city uh, last week was awarded additional funds, uh, NSP funds from the state. And this is the grant project ordinance to uh, accept those funds. There's a, a November 3rd expenditure uh, deadline. The funds will be used for infrastructure for the South Side project. Provident moved and second. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you open the vote? Close vote. It passes seven to zero. Thank you. Let's move back to item seven, which is the item that was pulled. Uh, just a minute. FY 2015 agreement between the City of Durham and North Carolina State University. And who pulled that item? I'm trying to find a car. Oh, James Chaffetz, okay. Uh, uh, Reginald, 
could you stay for a minute? Because I do have a question I need to, need to ask. I recognize Mr. Chavis. You have three minutes. Good afternoon, Mayor Bell and City Councilman. You know, I looked on the website, and this is what I found all together on the website. All this together for us to read in one day because we did not get it as a citizens. And I called some of the citizens that's working with me in the East Durham to learn more about the rail system. They did not know anything about it. All of this, but then when you come here tonight, I see it was broken up into two different forms. One is go back to number four that you already voted for. I forgot to get, I didn't get a chance to sign off on that one. And number seven. But on the website, it is all put together as one. This whole package is as one. So I'm asking how can we, I thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tim asked, asked the question, how can the citizens of Durham be a part of something when we don't get the information in time? This information was given to you all, some in last year and some this year in July the 1st. But citizens did not get it until this evening when I looked on there. Because my main interest is making sure people over in our area understand about this rail system coming here in Durham. We need jobs for our people here in Durham. We also need affordable houses here in Durham. How can we get it when we can't get the information to after y'all sign off and then come up here and y'all do not like what we ask? So I'm asking you on number seven, because none of the 10 people I call about number seven and some of these grants do not know anything about that module, but that's part of the rail. How can we understand about that module if that module also has something to do with job opportunity for the peoples in our community? How can we have them to come and explain it to us when we just find out about it right now and if you approve it, we still won't get no information. So I'm asking you, before you prove anything like this, please give us an opportunity to get these pe people like Bertha Johnson and um, I know he's, uh, he's on here. This is, this is a thick one, 66 pages. And I ask you all, for you vote on, how many have you read it? Because I haven't got a chance to read it all. I just had a chance to scan. That was by your, uh, Keith Chatwell. So please, before you vote on number seven to add into the rest of Please give us citizens a chance to get these people over to our area and respond to some of our questions, because we do have questions. Thank you. Well, do you have a staff person here to speak to this item? I, I think James is, I think you're probably reading a little bit more into what yeah. this really I mean, is. Th this item is yeah. not related to the, uh, the rail. Yeah. It is the regional transportation demand model modeling projects. It's, it's a modeling study. Can you come, you want to come back? It includes vehicles, you know, all, all transportation. Right, well, right, and that's what we are saying because we don't know and we want to know. Will that have a part of the rail? I mean, I'm, I understand what you're saying, Mayor Bell, okay. but to us to get to know or to ask questions on this, we have not had the chance. I understand it's, it's a part of the light uh, for cars and stuff that y'all gonna buy. You understand what I'm saying? Is that not right? No, I just this, glanced This is it. just no. the contract no. for the modeling. Okay, see, that's, that's, why I'm, I'm, that's why I'm here tonight to ask questions that we don't know because where we leave, we read the top headlines only and we do not get a chance to read anything in between until we can sit down and break it down like y'all did, those that did. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not reading to it, I'm just going by the the top main headlines and see that. And when I saw that, it said something about, and I asked and I called around so others can get involved because we are trying to stay up on what's going on for our community 
to make sure that we are involved and stay involved. Okay. So if there's a difference in number it seven is. than the rest of them, it I is. apologize, but you're, you're, I, 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 we just read that as a whole. You, you don't have to apologize. And trust me, James, I, you may or may not know, I chair the Triangle Transit Authority now, yeah. and I can assure you that we're gonna have as much involvement as possible as we move forward. So that, that, that's a commitment we have. I'm not saying we're going to agree for everything people ask for, right. but there are going to be ample opportunities for people to express their concerns and listen to see how we can react to that. But this is a different, this is a modeling study here. All right. All right. Thank you. Entertain a motion on, I'm sorry, we entertain a motion on the item? It's been properly moved to second. All, Madam Clerk, we open the vote. We close the vote. I'm, I'm going back to. seven to zero. Okay, I'm going back to supplement on item 21 which I skipped over. And that's why I call you back. I, I have a question about it. <laughs> I have a question about it. And the question I had, uh, Res, and I didn't pull it, the question I had, uh, a, a lot of what is in this program speaks about market studies. Mm -hmm. And my question is, how are we going to determine the credibility of a market study? I mean, a lot, a lot of what is I read into this That's not the one, I'm sorry. The one I was looking at is when you put together the program for how we're gonna spend extra money, the uh, housing, housing dollars. Okay. That's, that's the one, I, not, not 21. And a lot of that had to do with a, a credible market study in determining that. So my question was, how are we gonna determine who presents a credible market study for whether it's, we need more rental units or we need more home ownership units? So I'm not quite clear on your question, Mayor, because the guidelines for the neighborhood stabilization, we've, this is the third award that we've received. In I, I, it's not neighborhood stabilization oh. that I'm talking about. I, I was going back to the question that we, the, the, when we presented the plan for housing, how we're gonna use the money for affordable housing, uh -huh. and the questions were raised, we're gonna leave time for people to comment on it. And a part, oh. a part of that study had to do with the need for a market study if you're going to determine home ownership, if you're going to determine rental units. And my question is, what is a credible market study? Who's going to determine that, uh, what they present as a credible market study? Okay, if you're talking about the market study that we did for South that we engaged a firm to... No. No. This, per this pertains to the item that's on Thursday, the work session agenda oh, okay. about the yeah. dedicated funding for the okay. small yeah. projects. Okay. I, I'm not going to be here. Okay. Okay. And, and I, I wanted to get that question on the table because a big part of the report referred to market studies, and mm -hmm. I wanted to understand who is going to determine what is a credible market study. I mean, I, I could give you a study and say this is a market study I've done for this project. Is is that sufficient? Do we have any criteria that we're going to establish? when we talk about these market studies? So the uh, market studies that we, they, they do have to be a credible market study that's either a firm or somebody who has a track record in providing that information. Uh, do we have a, a standard outlined? Uh, no, most people who are able to do those do have a background uh, in that, so I couldn't come up with a market uh, study. I, 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 I'm suggesting that maybe we ought to have some kind of okay. standard, yes, okay. some type of criteria, yes. because anybody can come up and say, I've done a market study. Right, that is And the question is, how, how do we validate that? And again, right. and we'll, be, we'll have a way to validate okay. it. I'm not going to be here. That's right. why I'm, okay. I'm, I'm raising the raise, raise question. Councilwoman Katari. It's actually on a different topic. Is that uh, okay? Yeah. Well, I was just, uh, in trying to respond to Mr. Chavis's concern, I wonder if somebody wanted to explain the process again so that things that we see tonight on Monday night we've talked about at work session 10 days ago mm -hmm. and then when we receive the agenda five days before that does is that when it's available to the public so I just want to you know make sure that everyone understands that there are many weeks that you can look at the agenda and the information that's available I think it's important to explain that that there's nothing that's coming before this body or that we're acting on that has not had a public right. meeting with, with, prior with the exception to that. of anything that was a priority item, uh, you know, that might be added to the agenda. Even those would be would be added typically uh, no or no later than the Friday before the uh, 
the agenda, but the item specifically Mr. Chavis was talking about was still on, was on the work session 10 days ago. I don't think there's been any change to that since. I, I, that. Did, Dan, did that, did that answer you? Okay, good. And I, I apologize for jumping where I was, but this, this was an item that I had outlined, and I just wanted to make sure that we have some criteria when we talk about requirements for a market study. And that was item seven on the work session agenda item. Yes, we'll, we'll be able to do that, Mayor. Okay. Any other comments to come before the council before we adjourn? You don't need a motion to adjourn, but we'll go ahead and do it. We're adjourned at 8.40 p.m. Thank you.